Belfast is the second largest city in Ireland and the capital of Northern Ireland. With the Cave Hill in the background, a Burns and Laird steamer has just left its berth at Donegal Quay, heading for Glasgow. As she sails down the river towards the sea, she passes the Queen's Island, on which is located the shipyards of Harland and Wolfe. On these slipways, some of the world's finest ships have been constructed. We are reminded of the fate of the Titanic, which left Belfast Lock on April 1912. And the recollection of her tragic destiny still sends a shiver down the spine after all these years. No cine of the Titanic exists, but these shots of her sister ship, the Olympic, also built in Belfast, were passed off for decades as being of the Titanic herself. This footage shows the Olympic being prepared for a voyage from New York, a destination which the Titanic never reached. The New York identification markings on the sterns of the tugs have been crudely obliterated by a crafty editor to ensure the success of the ruse being perpetrated. The river and its associated docks played an important part in the life of the city. A familiar site for many years were the tugs and barges of the Belfast firm of John Kelly. Coal was taken from the docks up to the gasworks on the Ormo Road, which backed onto the river near the spot where Belfast Central Railway Station was built in the 1970s. Here we see empty barges heading down the river towards the docks and passing under the Albert Bridge. Though Belfast was a major industrial city, such scenes as these of sheep and cattle being driven through the streets to the docks for shipment to England and Scotland could still be seen in the 1960s. These were more reminiscent of a fair day in the west of Ireland than a major industrial city. Horse-drawn transport was not uncommon in the streets of Belfast in the 1960s. Horse drays and carts made their sedate progress through the city centre streets, their gleaming harness and sedate progress in marked contrast to the pace and bustle of a modern city.
To cater for the needs of its growing population, Belfast Corporation, in common with most major cities in the British Isles, built an extensive network of electric tramways, which at its maximum extent before the Second World War comprised 52 route miles of track. These scenes were taken by Mr W. A. Camwell. The cost of maintaining the system and the growing congestion made the corporation look towards trolley buses as a replacement for their trams. The first route converted was that of the Falls Road, chosen because it was self-contained and had a depot. Trolleybus operation began on the 28th of March 1938. Fourteen experimental buses were obtained from seven manufacturers. And two of these are seen in this 1938 view of Falls Road Depot. The two at the front are T4, a 68-seat Crossley, with Harkness bodywork and electrical equipment by Metropolitan Vickers, and T5, a Daimler vehicle. The first trolley buses lasted 20 years and were not withdrawn until 1958. T10, a carrier bus with Crompton electrical equipment, is seen here in Donegal Place in 1948. Up to 1950, the trolley buses were painted blue and cream. After that, the more familiar red and cream livery was adopted. Here, trams and trolley buses are seen jostling for position in Donegal Place in 1948. At its peak in the early 1950s, the Belfast trolley bus system was the biggest outside London in the British Isles, with over 240 vehicles in service and 36 route miles being served by trolley buses. The first tramway replacements took place in the east of the city. Craigor route opened in February 1942, followed shortly afterwards by that to Castle Ray. Stormont was reached in November 1942, Dundonald in November 1944. The routes to Bloomfield and Ormo were added in 1946 and 1948 respectively. Trolley buses reached Glengormley in the north of the city in 1949 and took over from trams on the Shore Road in October 1950. The penultimate extensions to the trolley bus network came in 1952 when the Glen Road, Hollywood Road and Whitewell routes were added to the network. Three depots serviced trolley buses during the 30 years they operated in Belfast. The original Falls Road depot closed for operational purposes in 1947, though as this 1963 view shows, access was provided into the depot for trolley buses as they were maintained and overhauled here right up to the closure of the system in 1968. Short Strand Depot operated trolley buses from October 1950 until March 1963, providing vehicles in the main for the East Belfast routes. A new trolleybus depot was opened in May 1947 to replace the original Falls Depot. This was at Haymarket, near the gasworks on the city side of the Albert Bridge. Haymarket was Belfast's main trolleybus depot and was in use up to May 1968. Before we look at Belfast trolley buses in action, let us remind ourselves of the types of vehicles that could be seen on the streets of the city in the 1960s when our films were made. The oldest types still in service are represented by number 33, seen here in August.